Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams and whoever else might be watching. Pardon the fancy headwear here, but uh, we're in the coldest week or two of winter down here in the southwestern corner of Arizona. The nights are getting down to just about freezing, a little bit above freezing, and it takes a while to warm up in the days. So yeah, it's a bit chilly in this drafty RV. Anyway, um, I was thinking about harmonics this week. Uh, I had a comment on a video a little while ago. Uh, a guy asked, when we're dealing with uh, harmonics, why do we only use low-pass filters? What about harmonics below the fundamental frequency? And although there are things called subharmonics, which occur at fractional intervals, uh, they're generally not a problem. They're very low, and uh, they only can occur under certain conditions. Generally, we worry about harmonics, and harmonics are multiples, right? So uh, a doubling or a tripling or quadrupling and so on of a fundamental frequency. So at 7 megahertz, the first harmonic would be double, which is 7 plus 7, 2 times 7, 14, right? 14 megahertz. Well, going in the other direction, the first harmonic of any frequency is going to be zero, right? The first harmonic uh, negatively of 7 megahertz is 7 minus 7 or zero. So that's why we only worry about low-pass filters. While thinking about that, I thought, wouldn't it be cool and interesting if we had a variable low-pass filter that we could dial in or dial down so it would come down and reduce the harmonics as we're dialing it down and we could visualize it or see it like on an oscilloscope. And it would be cool, but building a variable low-pass filter for RF frequencies would be tricky and complex. All the components in the filter, the inductors and capacitors, would have to vary together in a synchronized fashion. It would just be really, really hard to do. But then I thought, you know, it, the, the effect is the same regardless of frequency. Let's go down to the audio domain. Let's go down to below 20 kilohertz where we can not only visualize the waveform on a scope, but hear it with our ear and be able to watch things change as we bring that low-pass filter in and start eliminating harmonics. Need a variable low-pass filter? Well, I have a new bit of kit I bought myself this year. It's a synthesizer, and it has an analog synth. Let's look at that. This is a Roland JDXI. It's a hybrid synthesizer. It has two digital synthesizers, a drum machine, a sequencer, and an analog synth all in one. And the analog synth is a true analog synthesizer, meaning it uses analog circuitry to produce the waveforms, and the filter section, which is here's the cutoff for the low-pass filter, is all analog. So when I... Uh... That's a square wave, by the way. You can hear it. If I, ro if I rotate the low-pass filter knob, I'll bring the low-pass filter down in frequency. all the harmonics were being cut out and we're down to what's now a sine wave. Um, to show this, I'm gonna use my oscilloscope. So, this is hooked to the output of the synthesizer and if I press C again, you can see we've got a square wave. Now I'm going to bring the filter in slowly and we'll watch what happens to the waveform. Isn't that neat? You could see the waveform smoothing out as I brought in the filter, and it became a pure sine wave coming out the other end of the filter. Let's go, let's go back to a square wave. I'll start bringing the filter back up in frequency. And there was a high pitch sort of buzziness to it. Those are the harmonics that you're hearing. Um, we can look at the harmonics if I go to the math menu and I go to FFT. Now I'll need to change my... 
There we go. So over here is the fundamental, and all of these that you were seeing are harmonics. Let's do this again, and I'll bring the, the filter in slowly, and you'll watch the harmonics disappear as the filter cuts them off. And there we're left with just the pure tone as the fundamental, and those second and third harmonics are way down. If I bring the filter back out just a little bit, I hit stop on the scope. Now we can actually see the skirt of the filter. See that? It's a nice linear skirt. It's not a soft skirt. It's a linear skirt. But we could actually see right there, if we drew a line from these top points on the, each of the frequencies, we would see the, uh, the filter. Pretty cool, huh? Let's do that once more just to watch it happen. I'll open the filter all the way up. We'll restart the scope. All these harmonics. Pretty cool. Let's go back and look at the waveform one more time, just because I want to. There's our sine wave, and now we'll bring the filter back up in frequency. And there's our square wave. Isn't that cool? I thought it was. So now we know uh, visually how that waveform changes as we reduce harmonics and we actually saw it happen on the spectrum. Pretty cool. Well, uh, I guess that's it for this one. Um, I'm going to get back to work on the transmitter uh, soon, as soon as it warms up a bit. Right now, it's just too drafty and chilly. My fingers are stiff. I wouldn't be able to really do the fine work, which I can hardly do anyway at, at this point. So that's going to be down the road a bit. I'm not sure what I'll do in the next video, but we'll come up with something. So uh, stay warm wherever you are. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, by the way, Australia, New Zealand, you guys, enjoy your summer. I'm sure you're spending some time down at the beach. All of us up here in the Northern Hemisphere, though, we're hunkered down and waiting for the warm weather to come back. Here in the desert, in the Southwest, um, that's only about a week away. Somewhere in the first week or two of January, it's going to start warming back up, and I can't wait. I don't like the cold weather. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Somebody's bound to ask in the comments, don't you have heat in your RV? Technically, yes. Um, if I want to burn my propane, I've got heat. Um, but it's only a couple of weeks that it gets cold. And if I used my propane for heat, I'd have to take the RV 14 miles into town to refill the propane about every three days. So I just bundle up and deal with the cool weather for the, for the few days that it stays cool. And, uh, and wait for the warm weather to come back. Only about a week to wait. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, that's it. I guess we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.